That's a very simple set of ideas. And the reason that our ideas have not spread faster is they're too simple. The professional classes can't justify their existence if that's all they have to say. I mean, it's all so obvious and so simple. What would they have to do with the rest of the semester? We have to deal in things that we're capable of understanding. And then once we're over that filter, we have to have a business with some intrinsic characteristics that give it a durable competitive advantage. And then, of course, we would vastly prefer a management in place with a lot of integrity and talent. And finally, no matter how wonderful it is, it's not worth an infinite price. So we have to have a price that makes sense. And gives a margin of safety considering the natural vicissitudes of life. Well, at the time we bought it, it was succeeding mightily on multiple fronts. And it was cheap in relation to what was plainly going to happen. That was a valuable insight. There are times when even a company as big as Coca-Cola is too cheaply priced by the market considering what it's going to do for the shareholder. And there are times when we can figure that out, and there are times when we can't. And the times when we can figure it out, we tend to go in heavily. For many, many months, we were buying as much Coca-Cola as we could buy, roughly a third of the volume trading, every day for months. So we were very aggressive in buying into Coca-Cola. We have the mindset of the person that's buying the whole business at the price you would realize by multiplying the price we're paying by share by the number of outstanding shares. And, and we want the price for the whole business so calculated to look very attractive. So we like buying individual shares at a price that's lower than we think a rational person would pay if he could buy the whole business. Warren would have been a huge success if Charlie Munger had never lived. How often do you speak to him? Well, in the early days, it was almost every day, and now it's maybe once a week. Only once a week? Yeah. It's not very much. But sometimes it's a long conversation. <laughs> you and Warren are very much a double act in the chairman and vice chairman of the company. At some point, you want to probably retire, don't you? Step down, rest a bit? Well, I don't think either of us wants to quit except as the laws of physiology force it. And that, no doubt, will be soon on us. But uh, you've got to remember that Berkshire is probably the most decentralized big corporation in the world. I think the very decentralization of Berkshire and the extreme pockets of talent in all the subsidiaries will give Berkshire a very respectable future long after we're gone. And you've got to remember that we started with a little nothing. And our successors are starting with something that is not a little nothing. And you ought to be able to achieve a lot more when you're given a mighty hand than you were when you start with a little nothing. Now, they won't be able to multiply money as fast per share because that can't happen when you're working with such large sums. But in terms of a creditable institution that serves the wider world, I think Bircher's contribution after Warren is dead will utterly dwarf the contribution made while he was alive.